The world's first lavatory-grown beef burger has been flipped out of a petri dish and into a frying pan, with food tasters declaring that it tasted close to meat. Experts say new ways of producing meat are needed to satisfy growing carnivorous appetites without exhausting resources. Let's take a look. It cost a mouth-watering quarter of a million euros to make and wasn't produced like any other burger. It was grown in a test tube by Dutch scientist Mark Post. We take a few cells from a cow, muscle-specific stem cells that can only become muscle. There's very little that we have to do to make these cells do the right thing. They divide by themselves and if we provide those anchor points, the future tendons, they will self-organize into muscle. So a few cells that we take from this cow can turn into uh, 10 tons of meat. Each burger is made from 20,000 strips of meat. It's mixed with beetroot and saffron for color, an egg, breadcrumbs and salt for flavor and texture. I was expecting the, the texture to be more soft. There's really a bite to it. Um, and there is quite some flavor with the browning, it's close to meat. The project at Maastricht University was originally started as food for astronauts. It was funded by the co-founder of Google, Sergey Brin. We have a vision in our minds of, you know, there's this pristine farm, it's got a couple cows, a couple chickens, but that's not actually how meat gets produced today. When you see how these cows are treated, and it's certainly something I'm not uh, comfortable with. Meat consumption is expected to increase by more than two thirds by 2050. That's a problem for the planet, says Morgan Gay, a food futurologist. Animals create a lot of methane, they create a lot of uh, greenhouse gases, they're taking up a lot of farmland which could be used to grow vegetables and, and grains which would feed a lot more people. So we know that meat really is an expensive commodity on every level. The UN's Food and Agricultural Organization estimates the meat industry is responsible for almost a fifth of global greenhouse gas emissions. It could also mean an end to global food shortages. We have the tofus and the tempehs and the corns right now on the supermarket shelves. Things that really were uh, off offshoots from the, the TVP, textured vegetable proteins of the 70s. And we've come a long way to have that sometimes. And I think that the, the in vitro meat will have a place within that array of meat-type products. Post believes commercial production could begin within 20 years and any distaste could easily be overcome if the product is cheap enough.